see a million people, didn't you? Well, Midtown Manhattan is strictly for the birds on hot summer weekends. Where does everybody go? Underground, of course. The greatest underground movement of our time takes place beneath the sidewalks of New York each summer weekend. Hundreds of thousands of people tunnel their way out of the city, slip across the East River via the Manhattan Bridge, then go underground again beneath the sprawling borough of Brooklyn. Ten miles and thirty minutes later, escape is in sight. Escape from the melting pot of the big city. All out for Coney Island, where convention and care are cast to the wind, where a million people a day let down their hair, take off their toupees, and join escapists from all walks of life. The Coney Island boardwalk is nearly two and a half miles long and cost four million dollars. Hurry, 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 step right this way, folks for the greatest attractions in the world. It is believed that Coney Island means Rabbit Island, since the Dutch, upon landing here, found the place overrun with wild rabbits. And the Dutch word for rabbit is Coney. No matter where the name Coney came from, Coney Island today means fun. Last bunny on these sands was John Bunny, romping with Anita Louise, making an early vitagraph flicker. See me standing back there? I am a big wheel around Coney, king of all the amusements, 150 feet high, nearly an eighth of a mile around. Really a Ferris wheel and roller coaster combined. Eight of my cars remain stationary, while 18 others are free to coast on an endless zigzag track. wonder they've named me Wonder Wheel, King of Amusements? A conventional Ferris wheel beside me looks like a mere toy. In fact, Coney Island looks like groundwork under a Christmas tree from way up here. I weigh 200 tons and was built in 1921 for $200,000. But in spite of my king size, there is another amusement that dares challenge my right to the crown. There, between my girders, see it? The parachute jump, 275 feet high it's claimed to be. A refugee from the dismantled New York World's Fair of 39. People coming to these shores by ocean liners say this tower is their first sight of America. Somehow I just can't believe that parachute contraption is taller than I am by 125 feet. As for incoming ship passengers seeing it even before the Statue of Liberty, I question the constitutional right of its being here. At least that's the way I felt about the presence of the parachutes first along. But then I got to realizing no single amusement is big enough to attract 40 million people a year. The magic of Coney Island is all the amusements together, the big and the little, the fast and the creepy. Besides, what would Coney Island be without the roar of and the hysterical cries from its roller coasters?
L.A. Thompson, a grocer from Elkhart, Indiana, started it all right here when he built the world's first amusement railway on an undulated track, inspiring the 60-mile-an-hour cyclone, hurricane, and tornado rides of today. amusements to make a world of fun, the more the merrier and all that. I've been going around in circles all my life, too self-centered to realize this before. Back in 1895, George C. Tillieu already had the right idea. He spent his life saving to bring an assortment of amusements to Coney and operate them together under the name Steeplechase Park. You're seeing some of his nags race right now. Tillieu sure put his money on a winner when he dreamed up the steeplechase. Scores of amusements have come and gone since horses first rounded this track. But nothing, I suppose, will ever beat the merry-go-round for all-around popularity. Of course, the merry-go-round got a head start on everything else, the oldest ones here having arrived with the turn of the century. Today, Coney boasts ten carousels, no less. contraption down there all curled up around my base is called the Virginia Reel. Encroaching as it does on my territory, I've somehow never resented it being there. Original ideas like this and amusements that have proven themselves through the years, you just can't help respecting. And whether we want to admit it or not, the attraction that's more popular than any of us is the beach. This same show has been going on since the 1870s, when the Iron Steamship Company started running out here regularly from Manhattan. Of course, the cast has been enlarged, and the costuming has been streamlined a bit, and hide nor hair of a rabbit hasn't been seen since the hot dog came. cry, though, all this from the day in 1830 when a band of pirates buried their loot here. And the still farther cry from the day in 1524 when the first white man exploring for the King of France set foot upon this beach. Even a happy-go-laughing paradise like this isn't immune to tragedy and heartbreak. Around 3,000 children get lost at Coney every summer. So cheer up, Sonny. You're not alone in the world. Early in September, though, the tide of popularity sweeps away from the beach to Surf Avenue. For then, it's Mardi Gras time. Nothing can compete with the spectacle of the Mardi Gras.
The end of day at Coney as final as scattered litter, slanting light and incoming tide would have it seem, is only another beginning, a transitory lull at most before the spell of night sweeps over the island. as if the spectacle of Coney at night isn't enough. A first-class fireworks display is put on 13 times a year. They shell out $2,800 for each show, I hear, which strikes me as kind of expensive seashells. So there you have it, folks. A picture of Coney Island, a bit different, I'll admit, from the self-centered one I started to give. But who cares which amusement is called king? These days, it's the big wheel that people look up to, and no one can deny I'm a big wheel at Coney.